The man you were so disturbed to see and hear from last night, that man is the front runner for the Republican nomination for president. And according to polling, no other Republican is even close. That man you were so upset to hear from last night, he may be president of the United States in less than two years. And that audience that upset you, that's a sampling of about half the country. They are your family members, your neighbors, and they are voting. And many said they're voting for him. Now, maybe you haven't been paying attention to him since he left office. Maybe you've been enjoying not hearing from him, thinking it can't happen again. Some investigation is going to stop him. Well, it hasn't so far. So if last night showed anything, it showed it can happen again. It is happening again. He hasn't changed and he is running hard. You have every right to be outraged today and angry and never watch this network again. But do you think staying in your silo and only listening to people you agree with is going to make that person go away? If we all only listen to those we agree with, it may actually do the opposite. I think there is a version of what Anderson Cooper just said that could have a great deal more value than the final draft that he decided to go on the show with. Ending it with, oh, do you just want to stay in your silo and not hear from Donald Trump? Some of the people who you are saying just want to stay in their silo have heard from Trump thousands of times. They've actively engaged with politics from the very beginning of this, before he became president, through his presidency, through the cages, through the coups. I think a lot of them very much know the threat that he poses. They understand the appeal that he has for not half the country, Anderson Cooper, get it together. But 31% of the country or whatever, their opposition is not necessarily just their desperate desire to never have to hear his voice again. There can be other arguments. I'm not even saying that they're right. I'm just saying that he was attempting to appeal to them and then decided to insult them near the end. And, and also I would say in a larger sense, yes, okay, you can say there is value to reminding people of the stakes. Even if you wanted to be biased and say the threat that he poses, that's true. You're a 24 hour news network though. There are many ways to do that. Having a live town hall is very much not the only way to do that. Hell, having a taped one that you can intercut fact checks to, that you can, you know, theoretically not show the vicious mockery of a sexual assault. Like there are other ways to do this. And he is presenting this incredibly simplistic false dichotomy of we either do a live town hall where he gets to rant conspiratorially or we don't do anything and you guys are living in a safe space. I don't I don't like that presentation, Brett. What do you think? Yeah, Anderson Cooper, that is his argument. I was going to say it, but essentially, yeah, that's his argument is that you need to like any any town hall is the right answer. Anything that we have is indefinitely the right answer. But like you didn't need to blow the guy for like an hour and 10 minutes. That isn't it. You didn't need to just take it from him for an hour and 10 minutes, CNN. That's you, you handled it wrong. It's so stupid, it's so transparent. And don't scold the viewer, you mm-hmm. jerk. What is this? Why is Anders like I know like I think he has a kid now, so maybe he's like in dad mode, but don't talk to me like I'm your child, buddy. Like it was I respect mode. that you've been through a lot for a millions of years as like a Vanderbilt who voluntarily went in like foxholes in Chechnya, God knows why, when you were 17. Like that is Anderson Cooper's background. I remember seeing him on Channel One, like he's very dedicated to the proposition that we should do journalism. But like, don't yell at me because I'm calling out. That you just, that your entire network just got smacked in the face open handed for a straight hour. Yeah. You're, you got, you're stupid. That is a and, stupid and argument. I, I think you're right about everything that you say. I, I would also just add um, maybe this shouldn't matter. Maybe people are going to hear this and think that this is completely irrelevant. But um, let's say that we accepted what he was saying, that something like this forum does need to happen. I would say to Anderson Cooper, do you understand why people might be providing additional scrutiny to your network specifically? In the same way that the Voting Rights Act had an extra layer of scrutiny for certain states, 
it's understanding the history of certain contexts, in some cases geographically, in this case, in terms of the news. We know what you guys did during the 2016 election. We know what turn you've made in the past year and a half. Simply saying that someone should have a town hall does not mean that you guys should have a town hall. And it doesn't mean that if you guys are the ones to have the town hall, that we're not gonna question the actual motivations. Not necessarily the motivations of Anderson Cooper, but the motivations of the board of the CEO. It seems to be clearly following in the history of attempting to jack up ratings and generate profit by providing a perhaps dangerous venue to Donald Trump. So, or maybe it's both. But I think people are right to be suspicious. Dude, like, did he watch it? That's all I want to know. And can you, in your heart of hearts, Anderson Cooper, say that that was well executed and accomplished? All is that was that the only way to have Donald Trump on there and get people quote out of their bubble? The answer mm-hmm. is no. Like, I tuned in for a second because, like, technically I was on call in case we needed to grab extra bits of it for our coverage on main show. And I turned it on for a second and I was like, I can't watch this. This is horrible. It's so painful. I hope nothing breaks. And yeah. honestly, I'm I'm gonna ask for time code to go get because I can't like familiarize yeah. myself with it while it's happening. But and luckily also- when they needed the clip of him saying that E. Jean Carroll's cat was named Virginia. Like I was like, oh God, please let this be on Twitter already. And it was, so I didn't even have to go in Definitely. there and find it. <laughs> Um, but also, and you you sort of, I think, started to hint at this in the beginning of your response. Like one of the things that Anderson Cooper is doing there that we have, I think that Chris Licht also did. It's this very convenient framing of it. Wherein, did, did you guys notice that the fact that he was insane, the fact that he was disrespectful, the fact that he was conspiratorial, that just demonstrates more of the stakes, which means however bad he is, they're more right to do it. If yeah. he was to have jumped on Caitlin Collins and mauled her like a honey badger, well, then that just demonstrates how bad of a president he'd be and it makes it more newsworthy. Like they have framed things so the more dangerous and irresponsible the decision was, the better the decision was. But that's their, masterful. Their rules, I like. To put like a, a final point on the laugh tracks feel from a sitcom, the reason that they have live studio audiences behave the way they behave in sitcoms, and even on like Disney Channel shows that are not shot before a live studio audience, the reason they put the laugh track in there is I hate to break it to everyone who thinks that they just think for themselves all the time. It's mm-hmm. to teach you what to think. Definitely. So the reason, so by telling all the boos to shut up and all the cheers to be there, you get a sense that is yeah. false, but you get a sense that everybody loves Trump and that CNN is just getting essentially like, you know, I don't You're know, 100% embarrassed right. for la- for, the, you know. Yeah, it's the most blatant emotional manipulation possible, honestly. Um and probably intentionally. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.